My grandmother's father, Zelik Axelrod, was born in the town Makhnovka, Ukraine, which was a very poor town. At this time, the Radzivilovsky family came to the town. This was a wealthy and respectable family that was impoverished after the revolution. Yakov, the head of the family, was a religious man and disagreed with the communist system. He didn't think that the new leaders could deal with the ruling of the country. His wife, Ita, thought the same. The couple had two children. Grisha, their young son, died during the 30s because of tuberculosis. The couple also had a daughter, Mina. Zelik and Mina fell in love. As it was expected, Zelik, with his communist ideology, wasn't accepted in the house from the beginning. Only after a lot of time, the two got an agreement from Mina's parents to get married. Their daughter, my grandmother, Asya Axelrod, was born in 1939. Like many other Jews in those times, the couple had settled in Kyiv, a big city, the capital of Ukraine. Zelik was working as an engineering clerk in the company for building the subway, which was the most popular company in the city back in those days. Mina was a bookkeeper. They got an apartment in the center of the city. There was a maid in the house, a Ukrainian young girl who was also Asya's nanny. It seemed that they were at the beginning of a new and very good time. But it wasn't for a long time. On September 1st, 30, 1939, the Nazi army had invaded Poland. The Second World War had officially started. But in the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union wasn't really threatened yet. In the same month, the Soviet army invaded Poland from the eastern side. Poland was totally destroyed and divided into two parts, the Soviet and the German part. About 3 million Jews who were living in the new annexed areas. N some of them were sent to Siberia, and some kept on living in the same cities and towns. The rumors and stories about the Nazis' atrocities in the conquered areas started to reach the Jews. But in the Soviet Union, people kept on living under the illusion that Stalin was stronger than Hitler, and therefore they, won't, they wouldn't be attacked. The big disappointment came on June 22, 1931, when the German tanks invaded the territory of the Soviet Union and the big cities were bombed. On June 21st, the Axelrod family celebrated Clara's, Zelik's sister's wedding. The next day, while the Axelrod couple and little Asya took a walk in the park, a family relative came running and told them that the beginning of the war had been announced on the radio. Within a few days, all the young men were drafted to the army. Women, elderly people and children had to choose between leaving the places they loved or staying near the danger. The Axelrod Radzivilovsky family was one of the first to leave. Zelik had put his daughter, wife, father and mother-in-law on the train to the east. And then he was mobilized to the army to the combat engineering force. During the war, the family lived in Tatarstan. The landlords were Muslims and treated them very kindly, especially Asya, who was very little, delicate and hungry. Yaakov, Asya's grandfather, didn't like it, but the host family didn't give up. They would take her to their dining room, putting her on a pillow on the carpet among their family circle. There, everyone sat around the great family pot and ate their national food from it. Work was essential because only working people got food coupons. Mina worked all day as a bookkeeper for the army. Yaakov worked as a night guard. The living conditions were not easy. In the meantime, extremely intense battles took place on the front. Luckily, Zelik and his sister came back from the war in good health, but some other relatives of the family died in the battles. But the end of the war was not the end of the problems. Asya was six when the war ended. 
This is what she tells about life after the war. проживали до войны еврейские семьи эвакуированные были забраны украинскими семьями и им не возвращены муниципалитет предоставил нам одну комнату в коммунальной квартире в этой комнате кроме моей семьи проживала еще сестра моего отца так как их дом во время войны полностью сгорел. В таких условиях мы жили до конца 50-х годов. Бабушка и бабушка и брала меня с собой показать дом где мы жили до войны. Однажды во дворе дома она увидела, что бывшая соседка моет ее посуду, попросила вернуть, но получила ответ. Евреи, уходите, увидите, что вернутся еще фашисты. В 1946 году я пошла в первый класс. Школа была нерегилиозная, но девочки и мальчики вместе не учились. Совместное обучение было только с 1950 года. В нашем классе были дети разных национальностей. 50% были евреи. Учительница была старая еврейская женщина, потерявшая во время войны всю семью. И мы, ученики, стали для нее домом, семьей. Несмотря на боль в сердце, она воспитывала нас, девочек разных национальностей, жить в дружбе и любви. Я росла единственным ребенком в семье. Мои лучшие подруги заменили мне сестер. С двумя из них наша дружба началась сразу после войны и продолжается по сей день. Мои родители много работали. Моя мама работала бухгалтером, папа инженером. Моя бабушка брала меня с собой на места расстрела евреев, Баби Яр и город Чудно, где был расстрелян ее брат, его жена и две дочери, 12 лет и 9 месяцев. Когда в 1945-1947 годах евреи хотели поставить памятники на местах расстрела, городские власти не давали разрешения. Мы клали цветы просто на землю. Ася met her future husband, David Gobi, in 1958, at the wedding of one of her cousins in the town Chuno. David probably hadn't seen her for the first time. The girl had came to the house next to his many times as a child, but as a high school student he never noticed the little junior high student who was about the age of his younger sisters. For the first time he saw her as a young lady. David was very Zionistic. Those days he was studying in Kiev and the two started dating. At first, the tall and slim student with such different ideologies from the ones accepted in the family wasn't welcome in the house. One way or another, in 1960, a wedding took place in Asia's parents' apartment. On 7th of March 1961, my mother, Stella, was born. In the 70s, the couple wanted to make Aliyah to Israel, when my mother Stella was just a little child. However, Asia's parents not only didn't want to leave the Soviet Union, but also refused to give permission to their children to leave, which was essential back at those times. The parents thought they were protecting their children from making a big mistake. 
The children also didn't want to leave the parents who were growing older, without even a chance of seeing them again. David died in 1988 without seeing Israel despite his Zionistic ideology. Asya decided that she would definitely make Aliyah as soon as her daughter and son-in-law decided to do so. At this time, many were leaving the country. The situation in the disintegrating Soviet Union didn't leave a lot of room for regrets. Our family chose to come to Israel because in their opinion, only in Israel, being Jewish and being immigrants, could they can be really part of the nation and feel at home. In December 1990, my grandmother made Aliyah to Israel with my parents and my sister. They chose to live in Haifa, where we, li we all live until today. The end.